Now your light reflector <clears throat> is actually attached with two light yo-yo pulleys. Now the purpose of these pulleys is to just make it easy um, for those that are disabled or for anyone in general to move the reflector up and down. So the way to do that, as you can see Joe adjusting here, there's actually a wing nut that's attached to the top of the unit. When you uh, take the wing nut and turn it to the right, you tighten it. When you go to the left, you loosen it. Now, as you can see, when I loosen the wing nut, the line gets a great deal of slack into it, which allows for movement up and down for your reflector. Now, what you want to do is make sure that as you're, um, as you're actually adjusting your light up and down, you have it even for both sides, for both yo-yos. So you want to loosen them and then tighten them when they're both at the same height. Now, the nice thing about the yo-yos is you can actually lift the reflector up and down um, right at the base of it, and the yo-yos will automatically uh, suck up and tighten the slack based on uh, how, how tight you place the wing nut. Now, another thing um, that's included in your system is a smoke heat detector. Now, although we've never had a fire in the uh, tens of thousands of units we've sold, we've always included them just for a little extra peace of mind. Um, the units come with a 9-volt battery pre-installed, and unless you hear a, um, a loud audible siren, it's something that you'll probably never have to look at or use. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is actually um, access the light bulb that's inside of the reflector. Now, coming from the duct fan we looked at earlier is a line of flexible ducting that goes and pushes cool air through this glass tube across the light bulb, and then down through the exhaust line and out of the back of the what unit. The action in this portion of the video, I will describe how to uh, change the light bulb <clears throat> and uh, ultimately describe how the reflector is set up. Coming from your six inch duct fan, we have flexible ducting that extends down to a glass reflector. Now the glass reflector is actually attached to a steel collar that extends about that far. And the actual flexible ducting is attached with the reflective tape. You can see the joint here we left open just so you could see it. And then up top we have the uh, S-hooks that attach to the yo-yos. Now when <clears throat> right now we have the metal halide bulb installed <clears throat> you can you can see facing the cabinet it's installed on the left side of the unit and then as you pass down you have the flexible duct ducting attached to the collar the metal collar on the other side of the unit and then the air is exhausted out the back. Now what I'm going to have Joe show you here is how to effectively change out the light bulb when you have to switch from your metal halide to your HPS uh, portion of your light cycle. Now to start, what he's going to do is take a razor blade and cut the reflective tape that's holding the flexible ducting onto the metal collar. Now the, flexible, the reflective tape we actually put onto the collar uh, simply for shipping purposes so it does not come loose and break free during shipping. However, that uh, reflective tape um, is not necessary as the flexible collar fits on as a friction fit. Um, so once you remove it for the first time when changing your light bulb, you won't need to reapply it. You can if you wish, using duct tape or something similar, but it's not necessary. So the first thing that Joe's doing, as you can see, is turning in the excess reflective tape that was attached to the collar, attached to the flexible ducting, excuse me. And now what he's going to do, normally we use rubber gloves, but he's going to use a paper towel just in case you don't have rubber gloves handy. And he's going to reach into the far end of the socket, into the reflector, unscrew the light bulb from its mogul base. <clears throat> Notice he's not touching the light bulb. This is to ensure that uh, he doesn't break the glass or get any oil on it, which can eventually cause damage. He's removing the light bulb putting it to the side for the moment. Now what he's doing is taking the HPS light bulb and he's going to install that in the mogul base where the MH bulb just was. On a side note, if you're buying any replacement bulbs from um, anyone other than from Sunlight Sheds, please make sure that the wattage on the bulb matches the wattage on your ballast. It's very important. If you put a 600 watt um, HPS bulb into a 400 watt uh, ballast housing, um, you can potentially either blow out the bulb or, worst case scenario, potentially blow the bulb up, which can result in physical harm. So please be careful. As you can see, Joe's reaching in, screwing the socket, <clears throat> screwing the bulb back into the socket. Now, a very important note here is that when screwing in the bulb, you have to screw it in extremely tightly. 
it may seem like you're even screwing it in too tightly, but if you do not fully seat and fully screw in the bulb, it will not fire up. There is a mechanism that is spring-loaded in the socket, and unless that bulb is fully seated, uh, going in fully straight, and screwed in tightly, it will not fire up. Now that he's got the bulb in place, you'll see his next step is going to be to uh, reattach the flexible ducting on the far side of the unit, which once again, as we said earlier, is a friction fit. You can also add some reflective tape, if you wish, for an additional seal, but it is not necessary. So at this point, you now have your bulb changed. You can plug everything back in, turn the power back on, and start your flowering cycle.